found is a kind of force of attraction between the constraints. Lewis is a chemist. He introduced a new notation for representing the valence electron in an atom. Tendency of an atom to attain the eighth electron in its valence shell that is known as octet rule. Hello my dear students, a warm welcome you all. Myself is Purnima, lecturer in Department of Chemistry at Vidyasham Pre University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. My dear students, in this session, we are going to discuss with the new unit called Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. So before going to discuss with this unit, let's see the weightage of this unit. So from this unit, we can expect totally 11 marks and there is a 1, 2 mark question and there are 3, 3 mark question will be there and the question number will be goes like this. The question number 13 from the part B and question number 20, 21 and 22 which carries 3 marks from the part C which come from this unit and totally there are 11 marks will be expect from this such a big unit okay and it is one of the easiest unit where you can score 11 on 11 from this unit. Let's see what we are going to discuss with this unit today. So in this unit we are going to understand what is chemical bond first. Later we are going to understand the causal Lewis dot structure and approaches to the chemical bonding and later we are going to understand the types of chemical bond in that we are going to discuss more about the covalent bond and we are going to understand the Lewis representation of simple molecule and we are going to understand the formal charge calculation and lastly we are going to discuss with the limitation of octet rule. So firstly I will go with the chemical bond. So we already know that Chemical bond is a kind of force of attraction between the constraints. It may be atom or it may be molecule or it may be ions. So when there, this force of attraction which is exists between any two atoms, you know, it results in a formation of chemical bond. Okay. So it is an attractive forces which holds the various constraints together in a different chemical species. It is known as what? Chemical bond. And there are root causes for the chemical bonding. The first root is the tendency or a urge of an atom or various element to attain the stable electronic configuration. So it is nothing but a urge which has been created in each atom which is present in an element to obtain the stable electronic configuration. What does it mean? We know that every atom must likely to possess 8 electron in its outermost shell. So that was the first reason to form a chemical bond. And the next reason is the tendency of an atom to form stable molecule specially which is attained by losing of energy. So when they attain the stable electronic configuration always it will be caused due to the losing of energy. These two are the main roots for causing the chemical bond between any two atoms or any two ions or between any two molecules. So hope you are understood with the definition now. Now let us see the causal Lewis approaches to the chemical bonding. Okay. The Lewis is one of the scientists. He postulated that the atom achieve the stable octet when they are likely to be the chemical bond. So remember in the Lewis symbol, we have understood that Lewis is a chemist. He introduced a new notation for representing the valence electron in an atom. What does that valence electron stands here? Valence electrons are nothing but a number of electron which is present in its outermost shell. Okay. Suppose if I take the example of hydrogen, 
we know that the hydrogen has a electronic configuration of 1s1 where it consists of only one electron in its outermost shell hence if you write hydrogen with one dot which indicates that there are only one electron which is present in its valence shell and this is a valency of hydrogen similarly you can write for the helium where the electronic configuration will be 1s2 in the last orbital you can see that there are two electrons will be there hence we have written two dot so this is a a lewis approach to write the valence electron which is present in each atom and it was first discovered by a lewis chemist okay next you can take the example of lithium how many electrons will be there in the lithium three and the electronic configuration will be 1s1 1s2 it is 2s1 is it right so in s orbital there are only one electron will become unpaired and that is a only one valence electrons will be there similarly beryllium it is 1s2 2s2 so this is the last shell where it has two electron similarly boron which has how many electron three electron you can see that 1s2 2s3 you can see that three electrons will be there in boron similarly you can write for the carbon also what is the configuration 1s square and 2s4 so it is six four electron will be there in the carbon which is a outermost electron similarly you can write it for the nitrogen also where nitrogen which is having 1s2 2s2 2p3 2p3 where you can see that in 2s and 2p there are five electrons will be there so there are five electrons will be become unpaired similarly you can write in oxygen there are six unpaired electrons will be there similarly the fluorine there are seven whereas in the neon there are 10 electrons will be there in its outermost shell this indicates that this is a way of representing the element whose number of valence electron can be easily written by using dotted structure and it was given by the lewis hence it is known as lewis dot structure next we'll see with the significance of this lewis symbol lewis symbol which indicates the number of electrons in the outermost shell which help us to calculate the common or the group valency and the common valency of an element is either equal to the number of dotted or valence electron in the lewis symbol or it is equal to 8 minus number of dots or the valence electron so by using this lewis structure we can easily analyze how many electrons will be present in its outermost shell of an atom which is a common valency of each element and also the causal in relation to the chemical bonding have drew the following attention to the following facts you can see that in the periodic table highly electronegative halogens and highly electropositive alkali metal are get separated by noble gases is it right yes the atoms of the halogen can gain one electron to form a negative ion to get a octet structure similarly the atoms of alkali metal can loses one electron to get a positive charge where it get the octet structure similarly the negative and the positive ions are get stabilized by a electrostatic force of attraction for this i can take the example of sodium so if you write the sodium we know that there are 11 electrons will be there in that only one electrons are become present in its outer motion that is why always sodium will loses one electron and gets what positive charge this is a example for alkali metal similarly you can take the example of chlorine will accept one electron and become cl minus is it right this shows that the halogens are usually accepts one electron to get a stable electronic configuration whereas alkali metal can loses one electron to get a stable electronic configuration both of this you know 
when it is forms of positive charges or negative charges are usually stabilized by electrostatic force of attraction okay now is octet rule so while writing this you know i have used the word octet what is that octet indicates octet it is nothing but a tendency of an atom to attain the eighth electron in its valence shell that is known as octet rule so atom can combine either by transfer of valence electron from one atom to another or by sharing of electron in order to have a octet in this valence shell which is known as octet rule what is octet rule says that it is a tendency of an element to form a eight electrons in its outer motion that can be caused either by loss of electron either by gain of electron either by sharing of electrons also for this i can take the example of sodium chloride so this is an example for the molecule we know that in sodium chloride i'll take sodium first so how many electrons will be there so in the sodium electronic configuration will be 2 8 1 so in outer motion how many electrons will be there only one that is why sodium will lose how many electron one electron and get the positive charge so now the electronic configuration will be 2 and 8 so this is a alkali metal you can write the halogen now that is chlorine having a 17 electron okay so in order to get a stable electronic configuration which accept one electron which is given from the sodium and become cl minus and it got 2 8 and 8 you can see that the alkali metal it loses how many electron one electron to get a stable electronic configuration of 8 in its outer most shell every atom like to to have a eight electrons in its valence shell that was explained by octet rule similarly you can see that the chlorine even though it has a eight electron it requires one more electron to get a another stable electronic configuration this is how we can understand what is an octet rule and how does each element a tendency to Form a eight electron. How does it lose the electron or it gain the electron? Okay, this is how we can easily understand it. You can take one more example of magnesium chloride. So in magnesium chloride, you can see that the magnesium is having how many electron? Two, eight, and two. There are twelve electrons will be there. So it loses how many electrons here? It loses. Two electron and get the plus two charges, and the two electron will be accepted by two chlorine atom, and forms Cl two minus. So now it got two eight and seven, and now it got two eight and eight. This is how each element can loses its electron, or one of the element can accept one more electron. Stable electronic configuration. that was explained by octet rule okay hope you understood with this concept next we will see types of chemical bond so there are of four different bonds will be there first one is covalent bond then ionic bond and coordinate bond and we can say hydrogen bond okay these are the four types of chemical bond which are those covalent bond hydrogen bond ionic bond and coordinate bond more about the covalent bond we'll discuss now always remember the covalent bonds are formed between any two atoms by mutual sharing of its electron either the atom will be same or atom will be different and remember this covalent bonds also it may be a single covalent bond or double or triple also so what is a covalent bond now covalent bonds are the bonds which is formed by what mutual sharing of its electron between the two atoms so 
A covalent bond is a force which binds the atoms of the same or the different element by what? Mutual sharing of electron. Okay. Let's see what is a single covalent bond. When two atoms are shares one pair of electron, they are said to be joined by single covalent bond. Here I have an example of single covalent bond as well as a double covalent bond. You can see that I have taken out the example of chloride molecule. So we know that each chlorine molecule it has how many electrons in its valence shell? It consists of 7 electrons. So 2 plus 2 is 6 and it is 7. So it will share how many electrons? 1, 1 electron. Is it right? So it will share 1, 1 electron to get a stable electronic configuration of 8. So how much it's sharing its electron? So 1, 1 electron will be shared from the 2 chlorine atom. Hence it forms what? Single covalent bond between the 2 chlorine atom. Similarly you can take another example of water molecule where you can see that the oxygen which has 6 electron is it right in that it will share only one electron with the hydrogen and one electron with the another hydrogen atom where it attains the stable electronic configuration and each hydrogen atom which also gets the two electron because it shares its one electron okay so that it gains what stable electronic configuration and it is a doublet. Similarly, you can take the example of CCL4. In CCL4, you can see that there are four chlorine atom will be there and you can see that each chlorine atom will share how many electron? It will share what? It will share one one electron to form a stable electronic configuration of eight. Hence, it forms a single covalent bond. This is how the single covalent bonds are formed by sharing of one pair of electron between the two atoms. Hence, it is known as single covalent bond. Similarly, you can see with the example of double covalent bond. So, if two atoms the shares two pairs of electron, the valence bonds between them, they are known as covalent bond or covalent double bond. You can take the example of carbon dioxide for this. You can see that the carbon is having 4 electron in its outermost shell. Similarly, the oxygen has 6 electron. So, that is why the carbon will share 2 electron, oxygen will share 2 electron. Similarly, another side oxygen will share 2 electron, carbon will share 2 electron to get a stable electronic configuration what? 8 electron. Hence, we write the structure as COOO where it exists a to double bond. You can see that in ethene molecule also that is in a ethene you can see that each carbon atom which is having four electron in its outermost shell in the first step you know each carbon atom will share two two electron to form a double bond remaining two electron will be shared with one one hydrogen atom and to get a structure of carbon carbon double bond and it will be written as CH2 double bond CH2. Okay. This is how by mutually each atoms you know it will share its electron to form a covalent bond. Next we will see the example of triple bond also where the two different atoms will share three pairs of electron to form a triple bond. You can see here that is in a nitrogen molecule each nitrogen which has a 5 electron in its outermost shell. So, the 3 electron will be shared from one nitrogen atom, another 3 electron will be shared by another nitrogen atom to get a stable electronic configuration of 8. Hence, we write 8, we write triple bond between the 2 nitrogen atom. Is it right? And these two are the lone pair of electron. Similarly, if you take ethyne, so, in case of ethyne, you can see that each carbon atom will share how many electron? 3, 3 electron to form a triple bond. Remaining 1, 1 electrons will be shared with hydrogen. Hence, the structure will be CH triple bond CH. Like this, between the same atom, you know, you can see that they share 3 pairs of electron to form a 3 covalent bond. This is how single covalent bond 
double covalent bond and triple covalent bond will be formed between any three atoms or any two atoms. Next is Lewis representation of simple molecule. So for writing the Lewis structure of simple molecule, we have a following rules. So Lewis dot structure which provides a picture of bonding in a molecule and ions in the in terms of shared pairs of electrons and a octet rule. The Lewis dot structure will be writing or which can be written with the following step has to be followed. The first step says that the total number of electrons required for writing the structure are obtained by adding what? Valence electrons of combining atom. It is very very important. If any two atoms are combining, how many electrons will be involved in that bonding? That valence electrons will be involved. That has to be counted properly. And in the second step, for an anion, which is show the negative charge, would mean that addition of one more electron. Similarly, for the cation, we have to show with the positive charge, which indicates that that has been loosened so one electron from its total number of valence electron. In general, the least electron negative atoms which occupies the central position in the molecule after counting the shared pairs of electron for a single bond, remaining electron pairs are either utilized by multiple bonding or remain act as a lone pair or basic requirements are being that each bonded atom will be get an octet structure. So one thing is while writing this octet structure by using Lewis dot structure you know we have to count the number of valence electrons which is involved in a bonding atoms okay. And next thing is suppose if we represent it as an anion or cation we must know that anions are formed by gaining of an electron cations are formed by loss of one electron okay. And next thing is you know if it is highly electronegative the central atom should be written first and next is if the atoms are sharing or if the atoms are formed by mutual sharing of single pairs of electron then we say it is single covalent bond. If it is formed by two pairs of electron we say it is double bond similarly followed by triple bond. We will discuss with some of the example so that we will understand how this Lewis dot structure will be written by taking octet rule as a example. So here I have given the some of the molecules example where first one is hydrogen molecule. We know that each hydrogen atom which is having one electron is it right. So it will share one one electron to form a single covalent bond. Similarly you can see that in oxygen molecule there are two oxygen atom will be there. It shares how many electron? Two pairs of electron to form what? Double bond between two oxygen atom. Similarly in case of ozone you can see that we have written one is plus charge one is negative charge. Already I have explained that if the atom is getting negative charge which indicates that it accepting one electron. If the atom which is having a positive charge which indicates that that are formed by loss of one electron. Okay. So this is how we will write the Lewis dot structure of ozone molecule. Similarly, you can take the example of NF3 that is nitrogen which has been bonded with fluorine atom by sharing 1-1 one, one electron with the fluorine and the structure will be goes like this with the 3 single bond. You can take the example of CO3 2 minus. You can see that this is a Lewis dot structure which each carbon atom will shares 1-1 one, one electron with the oxygen atom with another oxygen atom which shares 2 electron to form a double bond. Similarly, you can take the HNO3 as an example. You can see that nitrogen shares a 2 electron with the oxygen atom and it shares 1 electron with another oxygen atom and 1 electron with another oxygen atom and you can see that oxygen atom in turn it donates 1 electron with the hydrogen forming single bond but between the oxygen and nitrogen you can see that there is a double bond. This is how we can write the Lewis dot structure of some of the simple molecule. Next is we have one more example they can ask you to write like this Lewis dot structure of carbon monoxide molecule and NO2 minus 
ion which is a nitrous acid you can see that in carbon monoxide carbon is having how many electron in its valence shell four electron is it right hence this carbon atom you know it will share three electron with the oxygen atom and oxygen in turn it will donate three electron to get a stable structure like this similarly you know if you write for the no2 that is nitrogen dioxide you can see that oxygen and nitrogen and oxygen will be written and each nitrogen atom will shares two pairs of electron with the oxygen and one pairs with the another oxygen atom hence we write the structure like this o double bond n o n o so this is a alternative form of the no2 this is how they'll ask you to write the lewis-rod structure of some of the important molecule now let us see what is a formula charge okay the formal charges of an atom is a polyatomic molecule or an ion may be defined as differences between number of valence electron of that atom in isolated or in the free state and number of electrons assigned to that of in the Lewis structure. So how do we calculate the formal charge? It is very simple. Formal charge will be calculated by subtracting total number of valence electron which is there in that free atom minus total number of electrons which is there as a lone piece of electron okay which is a non-bonding electron minus 1 by 2 into total number of electron which has been shared by its total number of electron which are shared. So these are the formula which we used to calculate the formal charge on the atom. I will take the example of the ozone so that you will understand how to calculate this formal charge. Let us consider the ozone molecule. In ozone structure, you can see that there are three oxygen atoms will be there. This is a structure. Is it right? How to calculate the a formal charge? First, I will go with the central atom that is the oxygen. So, you can see that. So, how many electrons will be there in oxygen? So, it is 2 and 6. So, there are 6 electrons will be possessed which is there in its outermost shell. There are 6 electrons will be present in its outermost shell minus 2 electron into 1 by 2 into 6 that is the total number of valence electron so it is 2 ones are 2 threes are so 6 minus 2 minus 1 by 2 into 6 which will be become plus 2 is it right this indicates that it has plus charge that is why i have written plus charge for the central oxygen atom similarly i will go with ended oxygen atom so here I will write this as a 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So, this is a 1 end oxygen atom. So, how many electrons will be there in its outer motion? 6. How many electrons will be written in the Lewis structure? 4. Minus 1 by 2 into 4. So, it will be 0. So, here you can see that it is 2 ones are 2 2 is 6 minus 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So, it indicates that there is no charges for the end oxygen atom. Similarly, I will go with another end oxygen atom which is marked as 3 here. So, you can see that. So, what is the electron which is present in its outer motion? 6. Okay. Minus how many electrons which is I have written in the Lewis structure? 6. Minus 1 by 2 into 2. So, 2 ones are 2 ones are. So, it is minus 1 I have written minus. This is how the formal charges which is present in each atom it was clearly understand by taking formal charge calculation and it can be written like this. So, hope you understood by taking ozone as an example and for the examination point of view it is very very important and it can be asked for 2 to 3 marks. Okay. Next, I will go with the limitation of octet rule. So, now we have understood that what is an octet rule? Is it right? Each atom in an element that tends to be occupies 
eight electron in its outermost shell. But not all the element will exhibit that octet rule. There are certain limitations will be there. We'll understand what are the limitations. Okay, the incomplete octet of central atom. It is the first case. In some compounds, you know, the number of electron which is surrounded by the central atom is lesser than eight. For example, lithium chloride, beryllium hydride, and beryllium boron chloride as an example. You can see that the lithium, you know, lithium is a central metal atom surrounded by chlorine atom. Is it right? Surrounded by chlorine atom. So here you can see that lithium has how many electron? Lithium has one electron in its outermost shell, and whereas the chlorine has seven electron in its outermost shell, so that it will share one electron to form a stable electronic configuration. So this indicates that the incomplete octet structure in the central metal atom you can take the example of hbr so in the hbr as well as in br bcl3 you can see that the boron has how many electron the boron has three electron in its outermost shell so it is not a stable electronic configuration to attain the octet rule hence this rule is not applicable to those element which is act as a central metal atom and do not exhibit its eight electron in its valence shell and odd electron molecule there are certain molecules which have odd number of electron like nitrous acid and nitrogen dioxide and these cases octet rule is not satisfied with the atom you can see that the nitrogen atom has how many electron so there are five electrons will be there in its outermost shell and whereas in the oxygen atom how many electrons will be there so there are six electrons will be there so it is not forming the central atom which is not having the correct exact octet number of electron even though it possesses the odd number of electron as seven so this is a case with the nitrous acids as well as in the nitrogen dioxide where nitrogen is exhibiting how many electron five electron that is why we write nitrogen as seven it is written as one s two two s two and two p three so there are five electrons will be there and which is a odd one hence it do not form a stable electronic configuration of octet rule then expanded octet of central atom there are many stable molecules which have more than eight electron in its valence shell for example pcl5 has 10 and sf6 has 12 electron around the central metal atom you can see that that is pf5 you can see that phosphorus has how many electron so it has 15 electron is it right so it has a 15 electron in that each one one electron you know it has been satisfied with the fluorine atom hence more than eight electron it has hence this structure is not up to the octet rule you can take the example of sf6 is it right so sulfur has 16 electron so if you write that structure 1s2 2s2 2p6 for this now you can count it has 8 electron after that 3s2 and 3p3 it is 3p4 i think 10 4 and so it is 3p4 so this indicates that even though it has a 8 electron there is a extra electron when you write its extra expanded structure so this indicates that even though it has an 8 electron, it attained a, a stable electronic configuration to obtain the stable electronic configuration once again. And this rule will not be applicable to those elements which is already having an extra electron. Next is, it is clear that octet rule is based upon the chemical inertness of the noble gas. But some of the noble gases except xenon and kryptol can also combine with the oxygen atom and fluorine to form a number of compounds like xenon fluoride, krypton chloride, xenon oxyfluoride, etc. And this theory is not accord for the 
shape of the molecule it is very very important so from this limitation we have understood that even though the molecules are tends to attain the stable electronic configuration some of the molecule has extra electron some of the molecule they possess the odd number of electron and this lewis dot structure do not give a any clarity for the shapes of the electron and also the noble gases we have already understood that the noble gases will already have a eight electron in its outer motion even though it reacts with the oxygen and with other elements to form a different product is it right that is another exceptional case and also we have understood that many of the elements where the central atom even though it is involved in forming a bond it do not have a eight electrons in its outermost shell so these are the main limitations of octet rule and which is from the lewis dot structure so in the next class we are going to understand more about the ionic bond by this i like to say that this is a one of the easiest unit where you can score 11 on 11 try to focus with the types of bond as well as with the octet rule which I have covered in this session in the next session i'll go with the remaining topics till that take care be safe thank you